Namaste and good morning everyone. We'll start our class with the prayers. Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastu Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 now, Mahamatunya Mantra, three times. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukam Iva Bandhana Mutyur Mukshiya Mamrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Uruvarukam eva bandhana Mutyor mukshi yamam rutat Om triambakam yajamahi Sugandhim pushti vardhanam Uruvarukam eva bandhana Mutyor mukshi yamam rutat Om shanti 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 Welcome everyone. Today we start class number 10 for this course that is a grammar part of the course. We are having the parallel Bhagavad Gita classes. So today we will cover these topics. Panini methodology for generating nominal forms. So I have told you many times that Panini has only one set of suffixes in his grammar for generating all the nominal forms. So whether it's masculine, feminine, neuter, noun, pronoun, ending in akara, ekara, nakara, doesn't matter. He uses a single set of suffixes to generate all the nominal forms. So how is that possible when we have so much variety? So today I just want to give you a little glimpse because there were some requests from some people that just want to have a little glimpse into how Panini methodology works. And uh, we are not going to go into very detail because that's not a part of this course that will take itself a new course altogether to understand how the Panini methodology works. But just wanted to give you some idea. So this is the, this is the set of suffixes which Panini uses. So you see, I'll just mark here some so this is su, au, jas. And what you see in the bracket here, that is the form of the suffix which is actually used. Just like we saw tumun and only tum was used, other things were similarly like the actual suffix is ot, but only au remains. So in, in only in certain cases. So wherever you see in the brackets, that's where uh, the bracketed bracketed form that's what the, the suffix remains so some of you might have heard somebody told me that it appears in the movies also uh, while just trying to teach Sanskrit grammar they try to sort of make it out like as if some sort of a Sanskrit is being taught uh, so the traditionally people would just memorize it this set of endings and the way to memorize this was 
you just repeat after the teacher. So let us try this. I'll repeat it one line at a time and you repeat after me. Su, au, jas. Am, out, shas. Ta, bhyam, bhis. Ne, bhyam, bhis. Nasi Bhyam Bhyas Nas Os Am Ni Os Sup So there are lot of rules associated with these forms that how these suffixes eventually give us the tables like Ramaha, Rama, Ramaha or any other table for that matter or a nominal part, not the verb, verb forms. Nominal tables, nominal and pronouns. So there are lot of rules associated with different kind of forms but there are certain common very common rules they are here so i have written down two such rules that you can understand easily so final sakara of a word changes changes into refer and from refer to visarga so for example if you know we had rama plus sa this sakara Sakara here that will be the nominal form. So how so how will it happen? Then it will become sakar. This is the final sakara of a word. It changes into refa. So it will change into refa, and then from there refa to visarga. So like this. So that's how it works. So you see, of course, if you try to generate all the other forms using just these two rules, it will not work because there are a lot many more rules. I just wanted to show you how Ramaha comes from this table, just one, just one set. Another rule is that final consonant of a word, if it's a part of a conjunct consonant, is dropped. So, we'll see the example of this. So, this particular set of suffixes, they work more for consonant endings. Like when you have a consonant ending nominal, the rules which are applied are fewer in number versus when you have a vowel ending now. So today we'll try to use one consonant ending and you will see how easy it is to generate from this table. So I'll just remove these highlights because this doesn't serve any purpose here for us. So I'll take this word Sarit, it's a feminine noun ending in Takara and it means river. So we'll see that how does it apply here. 
so first one would be sarit plus sakara from here and here you can see the definition which i was talking about final consonant of a word if part of a conjunct consonant is dropped so you see takara followed by sakara there is no vowel in between that's a conjunct consonant so the last part of conjunct consonant is the sakara that will drop so only the sarit would remain the same form the original form sarit same here sarit similarly when you have off form you will have so you will have sarit plus au oh. and that will become saritau just simply add them up there is no sandhi here so sarit plus au is saritau and here if you look at sarit plus now we will add the one in the bracket the one which remains not just but us and here again if you just add it up and create the sakara into refa refa into bisarga it becomes like this saritaha so just they come together and you see the rule here final sakara of a word changes into refa and from refa to bisarga so it becomes sarita then here you can similarly add sarit plus am again it be just becomes saritam here the same form because it's au actually here just like au the final thing is remaining au here so this also remains the same and here also it's us same us so here also it remains the same now this one sarit plus a so it will become sarita so sarit plus a it's simply sarita dhyam so sarit plus dhyam and here if you look at there is a sandhi taking place takara before bhakara which is a voiced consonant it becomes dakara we already covered these consonants and the rules so that's the only change will happen here it will become sarit dhyam sarit dhyam it's easier to probably a little bit read this way i hope many a times it is not when you write with the hand you don't write it like this you make them separate it just easier to read that way slightly here 
सरित प्लस भेस सो वन दिस संधि चेंज विल टेक प्लेस सेकेंड सकारा इज इन द एंड सो इट विल बिकम विसर्ग सो इट बिकम्स सरिधि सरिधि then this is a even though ne is the main suffix it's actually a so you can just have it here sarite and sarit bhyam that remains the same it's the same suffix exactly and bhyas same logic just like in bhis we had so sarit plus bhis is equal to sarit yeah Us, it is in incidentally the same suffix here. Us, even though it differs in the main one, but final form is the same. So here also it will not undergo any change. Bhyam is the same as ever. and bhyas also is the same one as ever nas this is the same form as so no change here os so here becomes sarit plus os becomes sarito ho sakara will change into visarga and sari here sarit plus am will become you just add them up saritam and this one ni it's going to be sarit plus e sariti saritos it remains the same and sup again the su only remains so it becomes sarit plus su becomes sarit su so these are the seven cases they are so easily derived in case of sarit that you really don't have to change much with just with these two rules you can have the whole sarit table derived you don't have to memorize you can almost get it just by looking at the suffixes but that's not how it will work in all the cases because there are many other rules which come into place vocative case panini as i told you it doesn't he doesn't define it separately he just say first case is the same as vocative case in some cases the singular changes so vocative remains the same in this case no change oh oh 
still it is doing it. So vocative. So it remains the same. So I just wanted to give you some idea that how the system works and when you study Panini Grammar Advanced at that time you can see that you don't have to memorize these tables you just have to understand the rules and then those rules will help you to derive all the tables. Another one thing I want to just bring your attention here. You see, I put this rule final sakara of a word changes into refa and from refa to visarga. Why this two step process? Why not directly say sakara will change to visarga if it always happens this way? The reason is that there are a few words which do not go from this transformation. They are naturally ending in refa without first in sakara and then refa changes to visarga the based upon what route a word has taken whether it has gone on gone from sakara to refa to visarga versus directly from refa to visarga some visarga sandhi rules change that's where you see that we have this rule here a visarga sandhi rule that when a visarga is preceded by akara and followed by a voiced consonant, it changes to O, like Ramaha Gachati becomes Ramo Gachati. But the same thing doesn't happen in case of Punar. If the word is Punaha, it says Punar Gachati. It doesn't become Puno Gachati. That's the reason. Punar is a nature word ending in Refa rather than that's why that visarga sandhi rule is different there versus something coming from sakara so because some of you had these questions and i did not put all the rules for you together but now i thought this is an opportunity i can explain to you an additional rule for visarga sandhi that if a visarga changes from sakara to refa to visarga these rules apply what we have put in here in the Visarga Sandhi rules. But some of these rules, they do not apply for those words. And there are not many, there are only a very few. That's why you don't see much of a problem. But once in a while we come across those words like Punaha. So Punaha, if it is a word Punaha, so Punaha Vadati, it becomes Punar Vadati. You might have already encountered this Sandhi in your exercises. And you will wonder that why this rule is not applying here. That it is preceded by Akara, Visarga is preceded by Akara and followed by a voiced consonant. It should change to O. But it doesn't change to O. It remains, it becomes Refa. So that's the reason why this per, this particular case behaves differently. As I told you earlier in Sanskrit, truly speaking, there are no exceptions. It's all rules. It's just that number of rules are quite a lot. But everything has been very well defined and structured how the things work. So with this, a little small introduction into Panini methodology and if and when you choose to learn Panini methodology directly, that time all these things would be explained in far more detail. But uh, for now, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about it. So if you have any questions on this before we start a uh, new thing, uh, you please ask. So the question is that, third instrumental duel 
द रूल नंबर टू डज नॉट अप्लाई लाइक इन सरित ए सरित सो रूल हेयर यू सी सरित ध्याम रूल टू हेयर सीज फाइनल कॉन्सोनेंट ऑफ ए वर्ड इफ पार्ट ऑफ ए कंजन कॉन्सोनेंट सो इट हैज टू बी फाइनल कॉन्सोनेंट हेयर सरित ध्याम इट इज नॉट ए फाइनल कॉन्सोनेंट इट कम्स इन द मिडिल that's why the the uh, this uh, consonant is not dropped here in sarit sa this is the final consonant that's why it's dropped so any more questions please ask on this topic before i start on the next okay so if there are no more questions we'll i'll i'll cover you cover the next topic in in uh, case of sarit which is it ending in takara similarly the masculine forms also work marut marut for example is a masculine noun which means wind it goes exactly the same way the the neuter noun behave little differently in the nominative and accusative case but in all other cases they 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 work exactly the same so this is only for takara and the noun we will study more nouns which end in at later classes there the rules differ a little bit one thing here i want to bring to your attention is that there are some some sections have been divided here so one is these five are one section and then the suffixes which start with a vowel like this one that is a different section so so this one starts with a vowel 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 and these two also starts with a vowel and this one also so how many are starting with the vowel 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so nine are with the vowels and remaining ones out of the other five we we remember first five are we already marked separately then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 are with the consonants so there is a question ought also starts with a vowel i am saying these five are already marked separately we are not counting these five they create one own section the remaining 16 we are counting among the remaining 16 total is 21 7 into 3 21 so we have three sections here if you look at five made one section then the uh suffixes which start with the vowels and suffixes which start with the consonant why this division so if you remember the form of rajan or we had form of rajan just one second let me see if i have it here otherwise i'll pull it from the repository okay so Swami so, Tapasyanan ji prepared this nominal declensions. I hope you are taking advantage of it, where he has given all the forms of all the noun forms. So Rajan here, it is on page seventeen, sixteen number form. 
so this is rajan and if you remember we discussed that it has three categories here so one is first five then another is this where the weaker forms are coming so we decided a strong weak and weaker forms that's the logic of those forms now you can see a little bit clearly that how this methodology comes about this is coming from the same paninian methodology that first five are separated out then the ones which are starting with the vowel they take the weaker forms in the, some certain nouns and others they take the weak form or the normal form so strong, normal, or weak, whichever way you want to classify three. So that's how the three classifications come about. So just remember that this kind of classification will, ha will happen in some other nouns also. So that is the logic behind it. Then, because if there are no more questions, I want to start with this topic called Upasarga. Upasarga is called verb prefix. And we covered it in Sanskrit 1 course in lesson 15. So I would recommend you to check the notes of lesson 15 from the course 1. So here is lesson 15 notes which you can access from the repository. And here was the one I had explained. It is, looks like, it must be looking like a long time ago. So it may be some revision may be in order here. So we discussed that time that just like in English, you have a verb say put that means to move or place anything but when you add certain words after this verb the meaning changes so put about means to disturb to worry put down means to write down to record put off means to postpone put on means to clothe oneself put out to extinguish so similar kind of concept here these are called prepositions but they put in the post positional the similar kind of concept in Sanskrit it comes in the prefix form and they are called upasarga and they change the meaning of the word or sometimes they don't but many times they could change so one example in Sanskrit for Upasarga is here, Hru. Hru means to take away, to rob, to plunder. But the same Hru, when I put it with the prefix A, it becomes Ahara, which means food. Vihara, which means enjoyment or dwelling place. Prahara means strike or attack. Sahara, killing or violence. Parihara means disrespect, disrespect, giving up, abandoning. So you see how drastically, just like in English we saw with the put, we saw with these prefixes change the meaning of the original word. And as you can see here, these prefixes have their own meaning. But in some cases, the meaning of final word is quite different than what we, you would intuit with the meaning to be. In Sanskrit, we can have more than one prefix applied in succession before the word. So there are 22 prefixes like this in Sanskrit literature, in Sanskrit. They, they are a fixed number. And those are given here in detail. Last time we discussed it from Thomas Eugene's book. That's where it has been taken. And you can look at this list. You can understand the meaning and see how do they apply to different verbs to change the meaning of the word. 
so prefix are very important thing in sanskrit very commonly encountered one thing here sandhi between an upsarga and verb is mandatory so i told you earlier that ramah gachati we can say ramah gachati or ramo gachati even though sandhi is generally happens but it's not mandatory between two words in a sentence but between an upsarga and a verb we don't have a choice sandhi is mandatory so pra plus ikshate this is verb here is ik ik means to see so when you put pra and ikshate it becomes prekshate he watches if you add the word anu it becomes anvikshate o plus e becomes v yana sandhi okara followed by ikara becomes vakara anvikshate he observes then if you use the word prati as a prefix pratikshate he awaits and pari if you add it becomes he examines so you can see there is some connection in the meanings but meaning changes and in some cases the meaning doesn't change more than one upasarga is possible so this is a very famous word vyakarana v plus a plus karana vyakarana it is the word for grammar the word we are studying is vyakarana it literally means to take apart in a special manner that's what literally the word meaning would be so what you take apart in vyakarana in reading grammar studying grammar you take apart the prefixes and the main and the suffixes like i told you last time we had this concept of prakruti and pratyaya every sanskrit was primarily with this prakruti pratyaya concept so this division of a word to analyze a word by its prakruti the base and the suffix or sometimes prefix that is the study of vyakarana to try to understand the word that how did it come about what does how is it whether it is the proper word or not so that is vyakarana so that's the how the word has vyakarana has come and that's what we are studying sanskrit grammar vyakarana another thing which can happen with an upsarga is a verb can change from parasmai padi to atmane padi not very common but it's possible so for example g is a verb means to win and if i make a simple tense let lakara it becomes jayati he wins jayati if you put the v as the prefix then it becomes jayate it becomes atmanepadi you see so in some cases that may happen vijayate do you remember that prayer we were doing in sanskrit course 1 ramo rajmani sada vijayate this one so that's how the vijayate the verb g is jayati but with the prefix it changes into atmanepadi so here it's parasmaipadi here it changes into atmanepadi this kind of change may happen not very common but it may happen in some cases so 
let me see there are some questions there is a question how can one know intuitively that sarit is feminine and not masculine or neuter i have told many times in the past that in sanskrit you don't get to the gender intuitively you have to know from the word a word belongs to a gender not the object so you there is no intuitive way to know that sarit is feminine and not masculine or neuter you check up in dictionary or learn the sanskrit rules which give you some idea that what gender is it the basic idea is that gender of a word is determined by how people use it. people use it there is no inherent gender in something the way people use a particular word that's how the gender is formed but based upon that speech analysis of people some rules have been formed which give you some idea of the gender of the word so there is a question shunt okara plus ikara would be ve vakara e long so here anvikshate it is indeed long so you see here okara plus ikara becomes vakara and ikara so here it is long anvikshate actually this ikara doesn't undergo any change this ikara remains ikara only okara becomes vakara yan sandhi changes the previous consonant not the following one so here if you look at yan sandhi ikara ukara rukara they changes to yakara vakara or refa the subsequent vowel remains the same what is the meaning of vijayate vijayate just means to win in a special way so it it, it pretty much the same thing as jayati he wins you can say he specially wins or he wins in a special manner or he wins comprehensively something like that okay there is a question vinir muktaha can you explain this word so this is a, there is a question related to to vinir muktaha so this is formed by the sub prefixes so v plus nis n if you look at the prefix table we had so there should be nis and that will become nihi so vinir mukta comes from there so it becomes nis and plus mukta because of some rules it will become vinir mukta so there are two prefixes here mukta means free and vinir mukta pretty much used in the same sense totally free liberated where is the powerpoint with sandhi rules in the repository it's in the sanskrit one course that was a part of the sanskrit one course in the repository in the other documents you will see it there plus it's also explained in detail in all the class notes okay so these are the topics today we i wanted to touch base upon
we can have a little bit of a class work and then we can today we can get to some of the questions and comments from the previous emails i have received so this is the class work you can study the these two page number from sanskrit subodhini and you can also try to write the declensions of the word marut just like sarit you can write for marut also i can copy that part here maybe i do not know where it will fit but you can get an idea that how to so it is not completely visible here i can try to reduce the font okay so you can try with this so right now it is 948 around 10 o'clock we'll again gather so you can write your questions in the chat window welcome back everyone there is a question can you please explain number 5 on page 122 okay so let's go to page 122 so here this is the case the point number 5 sometimes though not frequently a middle verb middle verb here the author is referring to as atmane padi verb becomes active which he is referring to parasmai padi and then parasmai padi becomes atmane padi due to a verbal preposition i told you the same thing in jayati vijayate he is giving ramate viramati another example with ram dhatu so same concept which i had told you with jayati and vijayate there is a comment here pranam thanks for introducing the panani methodology better understanding of the declension changes and the strong weak and weaker forms of rajan thank you there is a question page 121 relation nouns so page 121 this is page 121 page 121 so the question here is
Mukun Baba, I'm not sure where do you see your question because I see the page 121 and I don't see your question relation noun sorcerer. How do you get Bhagni? So, can you please clarify? Okay, uh, then uh, I don't have any more questions, so I'll go through some of the questions which you have asked in the emails. So one thing uh, normally we say that if you are not asking any questions, that means you understood everything or you didn't understand anything. So you figure out which category you are in. What I noticed was that most of you are not solving the exercise, not even looking at them. Because there was a riddle mentioned in one of the exercises and uh, one of the things I found very few responses that people even are talking or uh, responding to that riddle. So I just want to know your opinion, like how do you want this course? Uh, are you happy not doing the exercises, just attending the classes? Do you, do you think you are learning enough or how, 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 how would it best benefit you? Because if most of the people are not even attempting the exercises, then I just wanted to understand that how do you think the best way to conduct the course so that most of you feel uh, in tune and uh, feel benefited. So please uh, send your comments uh, through the chat window or write in the email. And also I want to know like is there a particular problem which you are not able to ask because of which you are not solving the exercise. Uh, or not even having any questions because uh, this is a course which requires some sort of commitment and you all are in one way or the other committing to be a part of this course. So just wanted to make sure that uh, there is a, the best utilization of the time and resources we have. So there is a question here. Where can we see the declensions of Sarit? It is in the book. So uh, right, not right now, not like in the chapter which we covered right now, but later on you will find in this chapter, in certain chapters, the declensions of Sarit. Uh, Takaranta now. There is a question. Can you please give some examples of Karam Pravachni? So there is a comment here in this book. that these propositions function in two distinct ways. Sometimes they govern nouns and function as adverbial phrases. In this kind of usage, they are called karam pravachniya. So karam pravachniya are the same words. We have already seen them in previous exercises. So for example, anu gachati, you might have seen that kind of usage, means follows. So prati gachati, uh, saha monim prati gachati, he goes towards the money. So like that, they are used not as prefix, but they have, they follow a uh, uh, noun. So then they are called Karam Pravachniya. We, they, those kind of examples are already seen in past exercises. We are in the same book. If you have been following the exercises, you must have come those kind of usages where Prati or Anu, or those kind of things. So that way, those are Karam Prabhachani. So there is a comment here. I'm very happy with the exercises, learning a lot from them, Swamiji. Thank you. There is a comment. I'm doing the happy doing exercises, but a bit behind. We'll continue doing them. Okay. So then there's a comment. This is great what you're doing. Sometimes it's hard to finish all of the homework. And in some case, cases, at least I look at the questions and solutions. Please do not change anything. Then there is a comment. I'm attempting the exercise, but trying to catch up right now in chapter 12. So that is fine. As long as you're attempting just a little behind and catching up, this is very good. What I'm seeing many of or most of the people are not even attempting any exercises. So that's where I was wondering 
are you happy with the way that is going that way the way you are able to learn so there is a comment please look at page 110 relation noun swasru so we'll we'll look at that if the time permits later on mukund baba but right now i wanted to be sticking to this topic there is a question regarding the sup endings you explained this was very interesting it would be nice to see how they also apply to the akaranta ikaranta and ukaranta stems so it is indeed very interesting and uh, when you see it truly being applied to all the nouns which are ending in like ramaha harihi they they are really very interesting and for that you have to study the grammar pani paninian way like in the original with the sutras and that is a very fascinating study in itself even though it is very very involved study so it's not a casual study at all it requires probably maybe a year long course to get to some footing into that kind of methodology but uh, it is very interesting and it is very very systematic very structured there is a comment here dear samaji it's not your fault life has taken over again i think i love attending your classes but right now i find it very difficult time wise to catch up or do any exercises apologies it is just lack of time there is another comment you are explaining things very well and offering wonderful notes study materials my not doing exercise not being able to commit the time to study throughout the week it would be better for me if the class was 45 minutes and few exercises per week doing le less each week will give me time to master and not get lost look the thing is that we were doing three classes per week last time last course and many more people were responding to the exercises so this time we have reduced to one exercise only and the class exercises they are long i agree but they are a lot of revision work where it's happening so then there is a comment swami ji exercise is most necessary in working on them i understand the content of the classes and understand more that is how the ji run infinitive works in sanskrit how the word order might be common also translations are essential to check how you understood everything how to split the sandhi what are the cases and with practice you recognize everything more and more quick it is indeed true exercise is i'm pretty sure that those of you who are doing the exercises regularly and submitting them regularly they would indeed have their learning their confidence level to a good extent at the result of at the end of this course uh there is another comment dear swami ji personally i think this course is fantastic the effort that is put in by sanskrit team with all the exercises and classes is amazing i am so happy with this course and i have learned so much since april i personally think nothing should change i like doing the exercises even though there are many so i'm just very grateful for the class and my thanks and gratitude to sanskrit team thank you so there is a comment i am also happy with the class but still trying to catch up with the previous classes there is a question do we have to send class work on declensions of maruti you don't have to you can just do it for yourself it is identical uh, not this time but next time it probably would be covered as a part of the homework there is a comment here if i miss doing some exercises in the previous classes i miss continuity and it's hard to catch up i'm assured that all the work is there so i can do it slowly as long as you are attempting and just a little bit behind it's okay you it can still be managed and uh, but if you drop the whole thing and don't do the exercise that's where you will find that slowly slowly your learning will not really be in tune with the class and you would also lose the interest in sanskrit now i'm pretty sure that most of you who are a part of this class are here because you are interested in learning sanskrit and being the online format has its own challenges if it were class i'm pretty sure that i could have nudged you a little bit more to get, get to the work done and you could have also asked the questions immediately to the me in case you had doubts so online format has challenges both hands but the advantage here is that we have the recordings we have the class notes you can refer to them back again and again and you can catch up in your spare time so there are both advantages and disadvantages try to take as much advantages as we have in this online format and 
the, the disadvantages we have of course those things can be made up by focusing on the advantages which online format offers to us there's a comment i am trying to do the exercises but it takes time for me and there is a kind of the comment we are happy just to hear hear, hear your voice then there is a comment sorry about not submitting the answers you are a great teacher and i am not doing justice i do attend but not submitting but we will do now onwards so, there is another comment sometimes sanskrit is overwhelming and i feel i am anyway going to forget and discourages to go forward but i am definitely learning and that encourages to keep going so that is not true that you will anyway going to forget and if you put your work there will definitely some learning and if you are keeping in touch with for example reading gita and other things you will not forget and uh, the, uh, the way i learned it was, it was in a similar manner i kept on pursuing it and i feel that reached to a certain point where i will not forget everything some things i forget of course when i do not look in uh, use them for long and then i can catch up relatively easily because the base is ready so there is a question here grammar is v plus separation plus a plus sound so grammar this word vyakarana v a karana these are the two prefix v and a and karana karana is to do literally it means the with the visarga to take it apart in a very special manner so the page uh, 122 past tense marker says may not be readily visible because that because sandhi rules applied so let's see page 122 here so they he is saying that because the sandhi is mandatory and some in the past tense form you have a past tense marker like akara if the prefix is also like this akara then they both together mix with the san, make sandhi and that may not be very easily visible that it was indeed a past tense form so based upon the context you could recognize them but that's what it means so in another case if it were, were like agachati comes then it will be simply not possible to figure out just by looking at the word whether it means it goes or it comes back but it generally does tell you based upon the context that what should be the meaning unless the author is purposely trying to confuse like the poets do sometimes so there is a comment here pranam thanks for everything able to understand i do follow the solutions trying to correct thanks once again for the effort and time to put away everything together it makes me understand appreciate your patience and teaching is awesome thank you so much and uh, much of the material which you see as a part of the sanskrit course swami tapasyanand ji is putting great effort to put all these things together so that it will be very useful for everybody here as a part of the sanskrit course so whether it is all the class notes bindima is also helping with the class notes tremendously so she is every week she takes time from her schedule and put together the class notes and then swami tapasyanand ji works on those class notes similarly all the exercises so please do read those class notes as i told you like class 15 those that was from the previous course but that gives you very good idea what the prefixes were and how did we go about them you could also look at the video which i had in class 15 of the previous course there is a comment here thank you for all the work is being put into teaching this class i have fallen behind on the exercises due to other commitments will try and catch up probably shorter exercise will make it easier to complete and give everyone a sense of accomplishment so i am just following the exercises from the book and uh, some of the exercises are long i agree uh, you can try whatever you can maybe even if you try like half the exercise say there they say there are like 20 sentences you try 10 if you don't have time 
it will still give you some sense of learning. And later on, when you do have time, you can catch up with the remaining. So that way you can keep up with the class, even if you attempt part of the exercise. So there is another comment. I'd like to do my exercise, but I'm not so quick in doing my exercise. I take much longer time than 10 hours a week. Often I sit until midnight and this week I had too much other important duties. So I even did not find time for the first time in the course to finish half of the work, sorry. So I'm very happy at least about your commitment. And to me, being able to attempt is what is the most important part. If you are not able to finish it, understood and you can probably catch up and even if you do half that's okay but what i was concerned about that many of the participants are not attempting the exercises is there any book in english that can talk more on panini methodology there are many but uh, if you truly want to understand and learn a book generally will not be sufficient it it's a very uh, committed course it takes like maybe in university setting it might be taking like a few years to understand the panini methodology properly so it's not that you just can read a book and understand there is a question comment here swamiji thank you for all your time and effort please do not change anything the course is very well structured and topics very well explained just need to catch up with some home tasks there's another comment i am swamiji i'm a slow learner it takes me longer to memorize the rules but i'm continuing to follow the lessons and class exercise thank you for the class and also i'm not seeing a lot of questions being asked from your side so please do not hesitate in case you have any questions just always feel feel free to write to us and uh, we'll reply to those questions that way you do not feel that if you don't understand anything that how to resolve you can always ask the questions to us in the class of course that is preferable along with the topic that way you get the topic clarity right there and then but even later on when you get the questions you can always send to us by email there's another comment here swamiji this class is helping me to read bhagavad gita indeed that is true and one of the purpose of the course is to be able to read the scriptures there is another comment here. The course is really fantastic. I love to learn Sanskrit. You do it very well. The only thing is that I would be happy if the exercise would be reduced. It was impossible to do the exercise for two past classes. The past week I tried to solve the exercise 229 up to no, number 38, but it took about 10 hours for me. So exercise 230 was not possible. As I said, yes, exercises are long. I understand. And more you try, more you get familiar, it will become easier right now because a lot of there was a lot of revision of the topics i was actually realizing that it was taking longer but you try a half if you don't have time half the exercise and half of the next and that's okay later on when the course finishes and after that you have more time you can go through all all over it once more and then do it completely that's 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 perfectly fine there is another comment here. Extremely grateful for all the efforts being put on by the team. Extremely helpful. Thank you. There is a comment here. Please do not change anything. The class is very easy to understand. You explain everything very well. And it's a great help the way Swami Tapasya gives us the solutions. I am so grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. There is a comment here. I am truly grateful for all your teaching and the entire Sanskrit team. Namaskar to all your efforts. Thank you so much. There is a comment here. Thank you, Baba Bindi, my interpersonal and Baba. Really appreciate your dedication and pray more people learn Sanskrit through the recordings. I do refer people and encourage them to learn from the recording. So here is a comment. Sometimes it's hard to finish all the homework in such case and at least I look at the questions and solutions. Please do not change anything. So there is a question, Swamiji, are you planning a more advanced course to follow after this one? So right now, it depends upon how many people are interested because I do want to follow the course only if there are people who are interested and they have submitted the all the classwork. It, it of course won't start immediately. So those who have not been able to catch up, they will have the time to catch up. There would be a gap of at least two months. If so, but uh, nothing is sure right now for offering the next level course. That purely depends upon 
how many people are interested and how well they are well versed with the sense up to sanskrit two level because it builds up sanskrit is a subject like as i told you earlier like physics or chemistry or mathematics it builds up so can't be done in isolation but uh, there is a possibility right now i have not decided anything on that today we are on 10th class we planned for this course to last for 16 classes uh, 16 classes for the grammar and 16 classes for bhagavad gita so that should take probably till the end of september start of october or something like that or middle of middle of october and then uh, we will have a cons- uh, considerable gap if if we start the le- next year so there as i said there would be a gap of at least two months and that should give those who are interested enough time and then we will see how many people are interested and then we could potentially offer so right now we will not change anything we will continue the same format exercise providing the solutions and class notes and uh, uh, those of you who are trying to attempt i am very happy even though if you are not able to be up to the speed that's fine you can do half and then remaining half can be done later and those who are indeed able to put the effort together and do, able to do the exercise they would definitely find the significant difference in their learning and uh, i am seeing some comments from those people that they indeed they are finding it very uh, uh, they are able to learn a lot of things so some of the questions from the previous uh, emails i have received i just want to cover those there was a question that how these sandhis how the words are like how these sandhis are coming into place this was a question i'll put it into the so the 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 sandhi here is tasyah jananyah it's the sixth sixth case singular janani jananyah shashwah sixth case singular and the visarga drops if you remember this rule visarga sandhi visarga drops when preceded by akara and followed by a voiced consonant or vowel the visarga is wrong so that, that that's the rule which is taking place here preceded by akara and followed by a voiced consonant so there is a question here aside from applying the usual sandhi rules i am not clear on when i should combine some of the other words in a sentence together and when i should leave them separate for example in the exercise we see the sentence one mitrasya vachinena nrupah khidyate kintu sa bhashate he mitra yada ham tvam ikche tada ham modayati could we not combine the words together like this anywhere we see a vowel and consonant together except before a quote like person is giving this example mitrasya vachinena nrupah khidyate kintu sa bhashate so if you look at here the general rule is in sanskrit that if a word ends in a vowel it is not combined with the next word if a word ends in a consonant generally they are put together so here every word is ending in a consonant you see mitrasya vachinena nrupah either visarga or consonant so visarga the visarga sandhi rules will apply then you see that this is all uh, vowels so if it's ending in a vowel it will not combine with the following word they will remain as separate and uh, until unless sandhi rules so sandhi rules are here which tell you that whether one word remain or two words so here in the visarga sandhi end result is two separate words end result is one word so we have already these rules fixed here similarly in the visarga sand uh, vowel sandhi we had that where two similar resulting in the one long vowel so when it is one long vowel 
then of course it's a one vowel, so there is no question of separation. But here, in case of ayadi sandhi, end result is two separate words. If you choose to drop yakara, so if you read that and just follow this principle, that generally when a word a word ends in vowel, then you do not put it together with the following word. So that's why this kind of construction is not generally you will not find in the books. Remember, this is not sandhi. Just putting the words together is not sandhi. It is just putting the word together. Sandhi rule, sandhi happens when there is a change either in the previous vowel, subsequent vowel, subsequent letter, previous letter, subsequent letter, or both the letters. So this this one he is giving another example. The person compare this with number fifteen, where the words tom, eva, mam, anindha are combined together. Tom, eva, mam, anindha. You so you see why they are combined because it's a makara, it's a consonant. So that's why generally it's combined with the following vowel, tom, eva. But here it ends in the cons vowel, so we don't combine with the following. Word. So same here, mam, anindha. So, is combining words in this way always optional? Not really, as I already told you the rules. So then uh, th there are some comments which people have really expressing their satisfaction and happiness with the way they are learning, and that is happening because people are putting a lot of effort and submitting the exercises. So there is some comments here. I am really so happy that in the last class the different cases were explained in such a detail. During Sanskrit course one, I was sometimes confused which case to use when as sometimes they really don't match with the way we use in English. But since last class, things became much more clear. Generally, I feel that this course, we get more into the core of topics, what we touched during the previous course and one gets more and more understanding. So just like in any course which you are doing, lot of repetition helps to strengthen the learning. So Sanskrit is not an exception. And uh, as we saw that when we started with the course two, lot of exercises were built upon the concepts which we touched in class one, but probably the exercises were longer and more difficult than the course one, which helped you to understand, to learn those concepts in greater detail. So this is another comment here. In the beginning, I was shocked to see the long text in exercise 226.1. So long, 226.1 is indeed was a long exercise and uh, this this was the text in 226. But to my delight, I figured out that I could do it quite quickly. I saw that I can now more easily see what is noun, verb, pronoun, etc. So this makes it much more easy to go forward also to add and remove sandhi it became much easier with more and more practice and that was really good to see so also the words i do recognize so this this i'm very happy to hear this kind of comment and that tells you that generally if you think about it how would you think that before you started this course that this kind of paragraph in sanskrit in devanagari and this person who is writing this she is not even she was not from the Indian background, so did not know the vocabulary or much or the Devanagari script much. So from that perspective, the progress is simply amazing. And you would you think of it to be able to understand and trans be able to translate this kind of passage in Sanskrit. So that's a that's a very good progress, and I'm very happy about it. And those of course it requires effort, but then with the effort, the result you can see that you are able to understand so much more. So there is a comment here. I think I have gone as far as I can sending the assignments for Sanskrit or two. I can translate the Devanagari script, but I'm unable to read it directly. Also, I have fallen behind in my vocabulary as I'm unable to commit the words to memory. I know only the English language and consider it a blessing have to have learned Sanskrit this much. Thank you very much for your teachings. So I talked to this person and uh, this person has actually indeed started to try to learn again because it does require sometimes effort and sometimes you can feel overwhelmed. 
but as i said if you have any questions please send it to us just see that where the things are getting difficult for you so it naturally if the things get stuck many people do give up and as you can see many people we started with a lot many more participants than we are right now but those who want do those who are able to work hard and stick to the end they will actually see the fruits of their labor so instead of giving it up see where you are having the problems and send the questions to us then this was the comment of that person again that i am restarting my study of sanskrit by writing out the vocabulary words in sanskrit subodhini with their transliteration and meaning and try to understand them i won't worry about leaving behind i feel so happy that i am able to see many of the vocabulary and sandhis in everyday shlokas starting with suprabhatam i know now know what tishthanti means including words like kamalani manoharani thank you so there is a comment here please find attached my exercise i thank you so much for typing out the questions in devanagari and iest this was a huge help so thank you so much this as i said this all this credit goes to swami tapasyan ji he is putting a lot of hard work to make sure that exercises are in place in this in the format that they are in along with the solutions and uh, there is a comment here as we have rain here i spent really a lot of time to do right now before sun comes back and there is more outdoor weather but it was quite intense and uh, surely i'll have to study more and then the person is saying i'm really bit proud of myself managed such a text long, long text somehow i'm very happy to hear that so as you can see that those who are able to do the exercises they are learning is really happening happening in a very significant manner and uh, that is a crux of the thing that exercises do help you to be able to learn all the concepts very clearly so with this i'll uh, just stop the class with the prayers and as i said please feel free to and the exercises for this week would be for the next two chapters we will post these exercises very soon so from the chapter 14 and 15 from uh, sanskrit subodhini the book which we are following there is a comment here my problem is the vocabulary not using the language it is harder to remember so i have to go back keep going back to the dictionary if you know that there is a sanskrit vocabulary glossary given at the end of the book sanskrit subodhini so i don't know if you are truly using it but that is very helpful so if you go to the end of the book this vocabulary is given all in one place so this is a very nice section where all the glossary is given both in from sanskrit to english and english to sanskrit so always please refer to this at the end of the book the author has given in a very good format uh, in sanskrit subodhini book so please refer to it glossary it's both ways sanskrit to english and english to sanskrit okay so there is a question here dear would it be possible sometimes for us to translate some well known mantras we have already looked a little at trambakam and class prayers i would be most interested to translate the mantras like gayatri mantra and also the prayers om ganpati to gun gum hava mahe we'll see some of them right now we are doing the gita course where we are doing the same effort for the gita verses we'll see if we if there is a time to do some additional prayers for that but my idea is that with the sanskrit learning you should be able to attempt at least if not completely solve to attempt to see that if you can make a sense of those mantras okay so we'll close the class with the prayers सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिनः सर्वे सन्तु निरामयाः सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चिद् दुःख भाग भवेत् ओम पूर्णमदः पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शांति शांति शांति
थैंक यू ऑल